Okay, so tell me a little bit about what you have going on with your hair right now. So it's a smidge dry. Okay. And it's more just like flat, so I need some volume, some texture, some to bring it back to life. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty much long. longest. It's yeah. Probably. I mean, you've got a layer in there, but it's if you were small. to wear it straight, it's very, very long. Yes. So I do kind of like I'm okay with having some type of fringe. Okay curtain bit like I'm good even though my hair is curly I don't really care okay you know. do you like it more where you still have the part with the fringe or do I you don't want... care okay I'm you're so fine with do your thing so we're gonna get you washed and then we'll do the cutting so we're gonna be doing a middle part on Christina for her cut and we're not gonna be we're gonna be removing about an inch and a half on her length but focusing more on really creating some nice layers all throughout her hair her current layer now is barely, barely shorter than her end. So we're gonna be bringing up her ends, actually almost about that much, so that we can, we can really put in some shape. Her curls are gonna spring up a little bit more, and then around her face, we're really gonna be doing some nice face framing with a curtain style bang. That way she can have some nice swoopy pieces for when she does go to style it, and if not, when she wears it curly, she'll still get a nice spring with them. And then I'm doing my typical parting right along the ears here. And then we'll start cutting our perimeter. So because Christina has curls in her hair, I typically am always like comb with the fine side of your comb to get tension. But because of her curls, I'm actually going to be combing with the wide side just because I don't want to pull it too taut and tight. Because with her curls, if you cut too much length off by getting it nice and smooth you'll remove a little bit more length maybe than you intend to just because with curls they always shrink so if you have a client with curly hair or you have curly hair yourself and you're cutting at home always leave about an extra i would say half inch just to give you some wiggle room and then look down for me come in she's got definitely needs a trim on these ends. You can see they're a little, little, not rough, but they need a cut. <laughs> you said it's been since February? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, with your hair being so long though, it's, I don't feel like that's that crazy. I feel like with it long, you don't notice it quite as much. Yeah. Like one day it just appears to be like ridiculously long. Yeah, that was last week. I was like, wow. Yeah, when I cut my hair, I guess, I feel like I cut it just recently, but I'm like, man, it's already long. I'm like, I cut it short for the first time in forever, and I'm like, oh, it's too long again already. I need yeah, to go shorter. shorter. You, definitely have to make you notice it yeah. faster. So we're gonna work all through her perimeter before I cut any layers in the back, which is how I like to do anytime I'm cutting a little bit of length up. Sometimes if somebody's barely removing anything, I'll cut the layers first, but in this case, I wanna, especially with her curls, set my perimeter first. So, and I'll show you guys really quick. When I use the wide side of my comb, the hair stays nice and loose. But if I come in with the fine side, it really tightens that out a lot more, which is fine for straight hair. But again, because of those curls, because they're gonna spring up more than straight hair, you wanna keep it more natural to how the hair kind of lays when it's curly versus straight, you really need to kind of pull with a little bit more tension. And this will probably be our last section before we layer. Mm, that's good. So if I get it dry and you want me to bring up more length, we can, but that got your ends more smoothed out. 
Then I'm just gonna check my corner pieces. Those are lining up perfectly. And so now we're gonna create the layers. With how long your hair is, I probably don't wanna bring your layer up like much more past your shoulder. I want it to be able to sit. I might do some, cause you're in the face you're gonna have more yeah. framing, but in the back, I'll leave them more like medium length. And then after it's dry, I can always do like a couple freehand ones to see how it lays, especially with the curl. It might be nice to have some contrast, so. Come in. All right. So I am gonna be doing more of a round style layer for her hair, just so the layers are nice and even everywhere. I'm just gonna come out and I'm gonna let that perimeter fall like I do with predominantly all my layered haircuts that are round. And I'm gonna be doing more of like a little bit of a point cut. I don't wanna do them too blunt just because I wanna keep her curl a little softer at first, and I always can go back in and refine later. I'm gonna see where that top layer lies, which is about perfect. You could set your guide on your layer on the top at first, but I typically, I like to do it the way that I'm doing it now. I feel like sometimes when you set the guide first, depending on, you wanna just make sure you do a really nice soft point cut if you're setting the guide first, because if you do it too blunt, then you gotta blend that in. And then I'm still predominantly using the whiter side of my comb to do her layers, because again, with that curl, I don't want it to be too tight, and then just follow through with my guide. So how do you style it when you wear it curly? Like, do you use certain products or just kind of? Leave-in conditioner. Is that all? And a little uh, oil. Okay. So that's one thing I'm not like, I've had clients are like, how should I do my curly hair? And I'm like, my hair is like completely <laughs> straight. So, uh, yeah, you just know. Yeah, just put leave-in conditioner and, you know, whatever oil. Have you ever done the um, Denman brush? Like curl styling. Do you know what a Denman brush is? Mm -hmm. They're, um, I'll have to send you a picture. It's like a certain type of paddle, but you can use it to like twirl each section. Oh, really? um, I saw it on TikTok and then I've seen a couple people do it on YouTube, but it helps like make it more ringletty. Oh, uh, okay. Um, it looks very time consuming though. But it came out like cool. It looks like it springs them up real nice. Yeah, I've done sometimes, like, if I want them to be, like, extra, where I guess it's the same concept, but just manually twirling my fingers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's very time-consuming, too. So, normally, I just let it do its thing. Okay. That'll definitely be springing up your layers. I'll probably... I want to see this dry first cut. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more now. So it's hard to see when her hair is wet. I can see that it's springing up a little bit. She's got her top layer is right in here. So we've created a much bigger gap now with her layers, but I would like to just bring it up just ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is come back to my center parting here. And I'm going to come all the way up to the top and I'm just going to twist my fingers here just to cut into this just a little bit. Not a lot, just to add a touch more movement to it and texture. And it'll probably actually remove a little bit of weight because sometimes that very top layer can maintain more weight. So I like to just do the light angling because it'll remove that and it shortens it up just a little bit. So it's really just this top corner. And then we're gonna come in and even out this other side with her layers and just keep following your guide, small sections. Um, sections are key like any haircut, but they're just as equally important on curly hair. Really any hair type, doesn't matter, section. Never too big, cause you'll lose your guide and then that's when you're gonna end up cutting more hair than you want. Let that perimeter fall and cut.
And then again, I'm just lightly twisting a little bit more to cut up a little bit more into that top layer to soften it. Okay, so her hair is starting to dry a little bit on the end, so I'm just gonna re-spritz it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come across our very top layer just to check it before moving in to cut our sides. So I'm gonna come across her top and we're just gonna bring everything straight up. And you can see she's got a little bit more length left here on this side, so I'm just gonna even that off. And then what I'll do, because that was a little bit longer here, I'm gonna come back over to this section and see where I need to connect it. I'll start that at the top and just blend this in here. All right, so now that our perimeter is done, we're gonna let out our first side and then we'll cut the length on both sides before doing our layers and face framing. You're gonna need some highlights after. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like next YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the long longest I've ever seen your hair. Yeah, no it is. I remember that one time we, I wanna Talk say it was that. about this length almost, maybe a little shorter and we cut it all off. Yeah. I feel like we didn't even cut hardly any off your sides. They weren't as long. Probably just because they were angled into more with your face framing like previously. But yeah. We definitely will be removing a lot of her length here around the face for the face framing layer. So you'll have a lot more. It'll open up your face a lot actually. It'll look good. And I'm still using the wide side of my comb here to cut her side perimeters. And again, we're not removing as much length on her sides, just of naturally how they were falling compared to the back. I do feel like as a whole, most people's hair tends to grow faster in the back than it does in the sides. Like if you've ever cut your hair short, you'll find that you are constantly like cutting your back as your sides grow out if you're trying to keep it even. So what we're gonna do is I'm only gonna do actually like one section of layers for the sides just because so much of this is all gonna be our face frame. So I'm just gonna take a section and I'm gonna over direct it back into our previous layer guide here. And I'll do that on the other side and then we'll move into the face frame. All that hair fell and just a little bit on this top. And then we'll do the same on her other side. So you're just gonna take your guide here kind of around your ear and you're gonna grab from your previous layer. And so what you'll do is you're just gonna over direct back into that previous guide. We're gonna be angling up, let that perimeter fall and cut. And so what this will do is just, just kind of give you a reference point for when you're creating your layers in the front too. You'll find it as you go. And then you'll just come back to that ear parting and we're gonna comb all of this back and I'm gonna clip it out of the way on both sides and then it'll be time for the face frame. So you said you are fairly like whatever with, obviously you don't want them like crazy short, but some of them did have almost like the full bang like here, but you mostly think you'll part them down the middle? Yeah. Okay. I think those are 
baby. They're growing back from having babies. Oh yeah, that's true. It does like take a little bit. Cause how old's your youngest? Three. Yeah. It's so crazy how like it'll affect, I guess all the hormones, like yes. it's a lot to go through on your body having a yes, kid, so. It is. So yeah, that's probably the growth, not necessarily a cut. <laughs> So we're gonna come into my typical triangle style partings that I like to do sort of right at the edge of the brow. Hers with the middle part are kind of laying fairly how they should as far as like your parting. So I'm right here, just barely behind her brow and I'm gonna match that on the other side. And so what we're gonna do first is set our guide. I am gonna leave them longer at first just because you can always go back in and cut them once they're styled and remove more length. So we're gonna take like a little secondary triangle here. And we're gonna come down and I'm thinking I'm gonna start it right basically just below her lip. So we have plenty of room to play around with. Um, with curly hair, you definitely want to, around the face, I find especially leave it longer at first just because you really want to give yourself enough wiggle room to cut more rather than if they're too short. So these, when they go to dry, the length they're at right now will probably be a little bit above her lip. So that's plenty of wiggle room. And then when we get them styled, because she does wear her hair straight a lot, I'll see if she wants to bring up more length. And then what we're gonna do is just create the rest of our face frame going down into this. And then this first little subsection, I am gonna kinda nick it back a little bit more to get more of that dramatic effect with the curtain style bang, so they really kinda pop out more. So I see my guide here, and instead of coming up like this, I'm actually gonna come to the other side of her, and I'm literally just gonna sliver sort of straight back to create a little bit more dramatic of a cutoff point here. I'm gonna do the same on the other side, so I'm gonna bring it down. I'm gonna come across from her and then just sliver straight into that. You really have to have coronation for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and on a human, it's much harder. <laughs> I'd be all over the place. I'm gonna actually nick this a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna finish off this side and I'll go into the other. So you can make a curtain bang a little softer. It all depends. Um, it's not like I want them to be like a disconnect. Just sometimes I like this to really like stand out from the rest of the blend. So I might come in and reshorten that. It just depends. But at this point, we're gonna come in down here to our longer point. And I'm gonna actually direct this face frame towards me just so we preserve a little bit more length and we don't get too much of a disconnect from her actual length around her face into the back. It'll blend it a little bit better. Sometimes with the curtain bang, you almost want that disconnect of the actual bang itself, but then when you're moving into the rest of the layers, you wanna angle the rest of the hair towards you. So as you can see, I'm still removing a lot of length here but she's maintaining the actual length and perimeter around her face. And then we'll just take our next guide. So right in front of the ear still, ear still moving in small sections so I can see my guide. And then you're just gonna come down. I'm meeting down here at my previous guide and then pulling towards me just slightly. You don't have to like really over direct it. You're just lightly blending it in. Uh, these are express. So cute. Thanks. And we've got our last section here. And then we'll repeat the same on the other side and then I'll show you how I sometimes will still come in and add a little bit more layer possibly in this face frame. So next section of hair. And again, we're gonna come down 
to our further point. So we're coming down into our longer point here and just pulling towards yourself as you cut, gliding through, removing length, but also leaving a little bit more than you would if you were to angle the other way. What I'm gonna do now is check her front face frame length. I've got just this tiny little nick here and I'm gonna come in now and just shape up a little bit more of my layers. So we're gonna start right in front of her ear and we're just gonna comb everything forward. If you watch my channel, you've seen me do this one a bunch of times. Even on real hair, this is how I do my face frame. You're gonna come forward going kind of a in front of her face, almost like to where the nose is. And you're just twisting and then cutting up that little hair that remains out. You're gonna come up a little higher. And again, positioning over her face and cut. And grab your next section. Same thing. Come down in front. There's really not much there at all. Come up and barely, barely on that top. So that's the first way I will kind of cut into a layer and then you don't have to do this step. I've just always done it. You're gonna come up and all the way over and just nip. What I always have found this to do is it just kind of evens everything up with the face frame and just adds just a little tiny bit more texture to it. But we actually blended that in really well. And then I'm gonna do the same on the other side and I will start getting her dry and then see how it's laying and if we need to cut anymore. So when I do the other side of the face, I'm more so standing in front of the client, but I'll still come across the face the same way, coming down at first, nipping anything, bring it up higher, your angle, and nip. And usually I find one side, when I do it this way, I have more to cut, um, which is partly just because of how I hold my body. You know, like if you're right-handed, you might find that the left side, you have to tweak a little bit more just because the angle doesn't maybe come as natural when you're cutting. And then again, I'm coming up and all the way over. All right, perfect. Okay, so for her blow dry, I'm gonna be using Color Wow's Dream Coat. This is a great product if you fight frizz. We live in Florida, so like it's super humid here. This lasts you through three shampoos and you can liberally apply it. What I also like is because it's not heavy. So if you have finer hair types, it's not gonna weigh your hair down. It's just gonna help you keep the frizz gone. So I'm gonna liberally apply that everywhere and then also use just a little bit of a volume mousse just because I live for volume and that way I can get a little bit more height and more roundness when I go to blow her out. Okay, so we've got you dry. You can see where currently the bang S aspect is falling. I did leave it longer because I wasn't sure if you want me to bring it up more. It I was gonna say, I think we should for a little bit more dramatic effect here. Um, layer, eh, I'll bring up your face frame to blend it in a little bit more too. But you definitely now with your top layer yeah. is much better. You yeah. have more movement. So, okay, what we'll do is we're gonna come in, we're gonna just separate again right at that ear. Do that on both sides. So yeah, I left her longer at first because I was concerned about if whether or not the curl would like be too short and then you can't remove anymore. So I wanna see a little bit more swoop kind of right at her cheekbone essentially. Um, it might not be quite 100% tuckable, but she'll have a nice 
pop there all the time. So I'm gonna come in, take out just a little bit. And we're just gonna comb these forward and I'm gonna grab a little bit of hair here. So we're gonna come in basically at the top of her lip here and I'm just gonna angle right into that somewhat severe. I feel like we can go even more. Cause these you're always probably gonna wear straight. Mm -hmm. You think so? Okay, yeah. yeah. So if you know your client with curly hair is always gonna wear this style straight, then you can definitely take up the length more. Just make sure you really um, communicate with them so they know. And we're still creating enough of an angle. I'm gonna take a little first on this other side. And we're gonna bring it straight down. I see my guide. I'm gonna angle my hands here. Cut. And we're just gonna blend in from that bottom. So I'm basically taking this curtain bang section is right at the edge of her eyebrow on both sides. So that way you have a thick enough piece here so you can really create some good bend. Cut up into this last little bit. And I like to stand in front of the client you're gonna grab, I need to take a little bit more off of this corner here. And you're just gonna meet into that. You don't wanna overthink it. Baby steps at a time, or I should say small sections at a time. And that's looking good. And then what we're gonna do is just blend this down into the rest of her face frame. So I'm gonna stand on the opposite side of her. I see that my guide is in here and I'm just gonna sliver down. Still working it towards me some, so we maintain that length and that just flows in. Very nice. And then we'll repeat on the other side. Oh, sorry. I feel like cousin it right now. <laughs> So she's got just a little bit more right here that I'm gonna blend in and then I will check some of her back layers before I get her finished off to get you guys out of here. Oh yeah, that managed to pull out better. And then I'm actually gonna restyle her bangs really quick just because we cut more length. So I'm gonna re-spritz them Spray them before I check the rest of her I back. Oh, good. Okay, so we've shortened them up a little bit more. Do you want me to tease it? If you want to tease it, you tease it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Let me show you your layers first. Do you need your glasses? Probably. Okay, here, grab those. But yeah, those are a good length actually with your glasses because they don't hit above, which will they'd be too short if they were hitting above. But then let me spin you so you can see the back. So it's still longer layers, yeah. but you've got more movement to it here yep. with your shorter piece. Yeah, and if you go to curl it, exactly. you'll have a lot more spring in your curl all through here. All right, here we have Christina's final look. We have a nice swoopy curtain bang where she can get some nice bend through that with a nice, very soft flow of layers moving in through the sides. We kept the length long still, but brought up her layers just a little bit so she has some more movement still on that nice, longer, medium length with the layers. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial and I will see you guys next time.